Hi folks and welcome back. I'm back on the trail again today having finished my my last walking series along the Norfolk coastal path I was faced with a with a decision to continue along the Suffolk coast path or to head inland back towards where I started from at the beginning of the Pedder's Way and that's what I've chosen to do. In this video I'm going to be walking the first leg of the Angles Way which is a 93 mile footpath which follows the River Waveney from its mouth at Great Yarmouth where I've just passed through to the source of the river and beyond. The River Waveney marks the boundary between Norfolk and Suffolk in East Anglia and it's a river I know very well from canoeing but I've never walked the Angles Way. I've walked sections of it but never the whole thing so I'm really excited to, to see the river that I know so well from the viewpoint of the bank. It'll be something a little bit different and I'm really excited about it. I've just left Great Yarmouth where I started my journey at the train station. Yarmouth is a historic port and seaside town. It's got a very well preserved medieval stone wall and it was once one of the wealthiest towns in the UK due to the herring industry. Charles Dickens once referred to Yarmouth as one of the finest towns in the universe. <laughs> Sadly today it's uh, become a bit run down and you only get the occasional glimpse of its former historic glory behind the flashing neon lights of the arcades. Some other notable facts about Great Yarmouth. The fish finger was invented here <laughs> back in 1952 and um, apparently Great Yarmouth exports spaghetti to Italy. It's the start of the trail if you're walking from east to west and there are loads of accommodation options and shops where you can stock up on food and drinks and supplies and things before you, before you set off. After you leave Yarmouth, the trail will take you alongside Braden Water which is an RSPB nature reserve and the largest protected open wetland in, in England. Um, it's also the point where the rivers Waveney, Yare and Bure meet before they, uh, well, before they flow out to the sea. It's four miles long and a mile wide and it can be treacherous if you're navigating by boat. There's a very clearly defined channel and outside of that channel area are mudflats. And then within the mudflats there are all manner of obstacles, old posts, and uh, bits of wood sticking up out of the mud. Some of these are old fish traps and medieval oyster beds and some of them are old shipwrecks.
As you travel through this part of East Anglia, you'll notice what appear to be windmills dotted about on the, on the landscape. They're actually wind pumps. This area wants to be the sea, <laughs> and it was the sea once. Um, and the only reason that it is how it is today with you know fields and cattle grazing is because man has made it that way. There are defences to keep the water back, and then there are pumps that have been built and used for centuries to, to, keep, to keep water off the land, to keep it drained. And the, the ones that look like windmills are the old ones, you know, sail driven, just like, just like a windmill. Nowadays, of course, everything is modernised and the modern pumps are all automated. So they just switch themselves on when they're needed and they even have uh, clever devices for, for clearing the reeds and things out so that um, none of the another pipework gets blocked. I'm just at the end of Braden Water here, where the River Waveney and the River Yare meet. So we're going to be following the Waveney, and up that way is Norwich, up the River Yare. We're just coming up to a, a very exciting historical landmark, and that's the, the Roman fort at uh, Borough Castle. This fort was built in the third century to protect against Saxon raids from the sea. And it's thought that it was abandoned about a hundred years later, but there's so much of it remaining. Three of the walls remain intact almost to their full height, their full original height, which makes it one of the best preserved Roman monuments in the UK. Hugely impressive. And you can see all these terracotta tiles in amongst the flints, still there after all this time. Amazing. Lovely.
it's taken me away from the river for a few miles. It looks like it's going to be sort of lanes and paths and, and tracks and maybe roads and things for, for a little bit. I'm assuming that's something to do with access and maybe permission to, to walk over private land. I don't know, but it is what it is. Hopefully we'll um, rejoin the river soon. We had a slightly tedious section through Belton, all on tarmac and past the houses and all the rest of it. But uh, thankfully we're, we're back on a, a nice little lane now, aptly called Sandy Lane, <laughs> which is uh, much nicer underfoot. A bit muddy in places, but yeah, nice to be off the road. Well, it's a little bit overgrown through this bit. <laughs> it's the first really dense bit that I've come across. I guess sections of this path aren't walked very often. And it's, well, it's like that. I've just cut off the trail and uh, just hiked off at a bit of a tangent <laughs> for about half a mile or so and, um, and found this, this little spot where I can bed down for the night. I'm absolutely knackered. I uh, did ha have a couple of spots earmarked and uh, when I went to check them out, um, they were just, they were no good. They were really boggy and um, 
insect ridden, you know, just mosquitoes galore. There was no way I was going to camp in amongst that lot. <laughs> I need a good night's sleep, <laughs> not a miserable one. So, um, yeah, I found this little spot here, which will do the job. I'll get myself uh, set up shortly. I'm just going to chill out for a little bit. Enjoy not having that rucksack on my shoulders. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty knackered. Um, you know, if you were walking this, uh, this stage um, from the start to, to where I uh, cut off the trail, It'll probably be 10 or 11 miles, I suppose, something like that. Um, but because I'm filming, I'm backwards and forwards for the camera all the time, so it ends up racking up more, more distance. I don't know how much I've walked, but it seems like a fair, a fair old whack. <laughs> yeah, so it's nice to stop. I'm all set up for the evening. I've got my lightweight tarp and bivy, and I even had enough room for my for my chair, which is good. So I've got some comfortable seating for the evening. Um, I got quite chilly a minute ago. That wind is just cutting through this woodland, so this tarp is doing a good job of just deflecting that wind off me. I'm sort of nestled in behind it, and uh, it's a lot warmer. I've put my warm coat and my woolly hat on as well, just to keep that warmth in. I'm going to get on and uh, cook some dinner in a minute. I've just got. A dehydrated meal. I've mostly bought dehydrated meals on this trip just because it's so much easier and lighter. You know, I can pick up water en route as I go and um, I haven't got to carry the extra weight that you have with uh, with wet meals, you know. And I've got all, all my meals that I need for this trip with me. So uh, that's good. I'll get on and do that in a minute. Starting to get Starting to get a bit hungry now. This is dinner. This is a Norwegian Army Arctic field ration, dehydrated one. Um, and it's uh, creamy pasta with pork. Should be really nice. Looking forward to this. Um, if you've been watching my recent uh, ration pack review series, um, this isn't a review of this. <laughs> uh, this is just dinner. But I do have another one of these, which I will do a review of um, another time. But yeah, this has got loads of calories in. Should be just the old job. Fill it up to the line. My cozy. And leave that for some minutes. <laughs> While that's rehydrating, I'm gonna have a little warming hot chocolate with a bit of extra warming.
Right, that's had about seven minutes. And I'm thinking that might be enough. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be enough, I'm hungry. Looks good, the pasta is kind of like noodle pasta with chunks of pork and some other stuff, vegetables and things. Yep, that's done. And it's good. <laughs> mm. I'm going to show you on the map where I've walked today. I know it's probably not going to be that clear, but hopefully it will give you some idea. This is Great Yarmouth train station where I started. Then I walked through the town, across this bridge over here, and then back on myself and up and out onto that raised footpath. And I walked all the way along here next to Braden Water. That's the channel I was talking about, which runs through. And everything either side is just mud. The tide was in while I was walking along there, so it looked like just one big expanse of water, but it's all very shallow and just mud and posts and dangerous obstacles. So I walked along here, that's that pumping station I walked past, and then down to the end here. Let's just move that up a bit. Uh, this is the Roman fort at um, Borough Castle, and then we continued along here and this is the point where the path headed away from the river. So we came in here and we walked through Belton there. And then this is Sandy Lane, which was quite nice. It was sort of tree lined and I just imagine on a nice hot day that would be quite a welcome shady bit of relief along there. And then at the end we came down this way and joined this busy road here. This is an, an A road, the 143, the A143 and then came down past um, Fritton Lake. I'll talk to you a bit more about Fritton Lake tomorrow. That's quite interesting, it's got a bit of interesting history. And then we're currently in a bit of woodland in the vicinity <laughs> of Fritton Lake. just having a another um, <laughs> boozy hot chocolate and very nice it is too it's um nearly nine o'clock and uh, the light is fading pretty quickly I'm gonna get this finished off and um, crawl into my sleeping bag snuggle down get myself cozy and get some kip I'm pretty tired I know it's not late but um, sometimes an earlier night is a good thing yeah it's been um, it's been a good day today, blustery, but um, yeah, really enjoyed the walk around and past um, Braden Water and seeing the uh, the Roman fort. I've wanted to go and visit that fort for a long time. I've always known it's there, just um, yeah, never been never been to visit it. So it was nice to go and see it today. Yeah, really good. Bit of road walking, um, which I'm not overly keen on to be honest, but often these paths have a bit of road. You know the Norfolk Coast Path does, the the Pedders Way does. Sometimes it's um, unavoidable. I'm I'm pretty pleased with uh, how far I've got. Nice little spot here to spend the night. Yeah, I think um, tomorrow it's supposed to be a bit nicer, uh, a bit clearer, and the sun might even come out in the afternoon, which would be lovely. It's uh, hard to believe it's May. It's just chilly and blustery, and it's just been so wet lately as well. It's just not not good. I want, I want it to warm up. <laughs> I need some sun. Yeah, I um, didn't have a didn't have a fire this evening. I uh, didn't want to run the risk of getting caught here with a fire. You know, I haven't got permission to be in this woodland. 
Um, I didn't need it for cooking, although it would have been nice for a bit of warmth and something to prod. But um, yeah, I chose, I chose not to. Just the old meths burner to, to boil water for, for dinner and for boozy hot chocolates, <laughs> coffee in the morning, that sort of thing. Yeah, this is very, very nice. Mm. I'm gonna finish this up and turn in. I'll see you guys in the morning for part two. Good night.